So if you really want to understand Agile, you need to understand Waterfall. I'm not sure how many of you really worked in Waterfall projects, uh, but I had the good or rather bad fortune of working on the Waterfall projects uh, 20 years ago. So that was, there was no concept of Agile then, even though there might be, um, but it's not really widespread. It was just taking the uh, roots then back in 2000, I think, uh, when it really kind of um, you know, got into the, um, as, as an approach, it was actually floated by uh, some of the people in Scrum. Um, the, and then this, that, uh, that's how we actually kind of uh, took the roots from there. So we'll talk about waterfall and then why um, Agile is a better option than waterfall. So in the waterfall model, basically waterfall model is nothing like, as you see, the, the, this is the design, the water, if you throw the water, it just you know, pours from the top step all the way down to the water. So that's typically what we call as a waterfall. So in waterfall model, it starts off with the requirements as to what is required for us to do that. And then it goes on to the design. You, look, you come up with an architecture, you do a basic high level design, a low level design, and then you actually get into the coding. You then do the, once the coding is done, then that's when the testing is initiated. You do the tests and from there on, you do the deployment and the implementation. And finally, you get into the maintenance of it. So if you see this, each of these is like, you know, if you complete this one, then you get to the next one. You cannot have the water flowing back. That's the problem with the waterfall model, simply put. So what that means is, I mean, I remember spending three months to write a requirement document and the requirement document used to be so big, uh, about 300 page document, what we call as a FRS, the functional requirement specification document. And then from there on, we used to have the um, software requirement specification or the supplementary specification, which is the non-functional ones. And then we submit this FRS after spending three months to the client for review. Client would spend another month to actually you know, go through that. After about another month of uh, changes, updates, deletions, additions to this, finally it, it takes a form of a, a completed or approved stage, which is what I'm talking about, roughly five months just to get the requirements uh, accepted and, and frozen, what we call as sign off in, in that times. So we get the client sign off. It takes five months to sign up the, uh, the requirement. And from there on, another three, two to three months for the architecture, then the design starts. So you're talking about roughly nine months into the project uh, when the actual coding will start, when the programmer would actually start the coding. And from there on, it would take roughly about five, six months for them to finish something. And so you're talking about uh, roughly a year and a half, by which time the testing would be um, almost completed. And so that would be shared with the client for their review. So they have not seen anything till then. So you're talking about all of this in the, for example, like in the dark room, people working in their own, like the photographers, how they used to develop the photos back in those days, the black and white photos, they used to actually dip those and then in the, in the solution, they used to put those. And then after some time, the photos, it, it gets dried. So the next day morning, perhaps you would actually take the photos out and you can see that. It's not like the Polaroid or, or, or the kind of uh, instant photos that we see now. So there is a bit of process involved. There's a bit of time taken involved in that dark room photo development. In the same context, what happens here is the developers, the entire development team would actually go back, sit in their own offices on the desk and then they do the coding. So the customer is completely unaware of what's really happening. After about a roughly year and a half of giving the requirements, they actually get to see something that they, they thought is what they, what they needed. But you know what? When you show that at that point of and say, this is not what we needed. This is not what we want. This is completely different. Or things would have changed meanwhile. Who has got uh, any idea till then? Nobody. The requirements are already frozen. So we started off with the development. And um, about a year and a half later, you go to the client and show, hey, this is your product. They say, no way. We don't want this now. This is like, and that's why no wonder there is actually a report called Standish Group Report, which actually said, um, it did a research in terms of the IT project failures. It said that about 90% of all the IT projects done in the whole world were failures. And they actually identified the factors and about 73% of the projects failed because of the requirements, because of the fact that the requirements are not specified, there are changes in the requirements, they're not communicated well, all that stuff. 
So you can actually get to see these are the definitely a lot of problems with the waterfall.